Hi, let's create a simple count up timer together. This time counter could be used for almost any type of game, like for example speedrunning games, where it could be used as a competitive part for the players to compare their best times. And on the other hand, you could use this feature in an RPG game for things like the night cycle or maybe to open the shops at certain time in the game. It's really up to you. But for now, let's understand how does it work. And later we will create a count up timer together. So at first, we've got a separate scene on screen timer, where it is a simple node to D with a label and timer. My timer is set to one second and the process callback is idle. It's very important to turn off the one shot because we would like to restart the timer on every single second. And here's why we would like to do that. In the GD script, there's not a lot of code in here, so don't be afraid. At first, let's create our three variables. Label and timer are simple reference to our timer and label. And the third one is total time in seconds. Because beneath all of that, we only need seconds to measure the minutes and even hours. It's the integer and it's set to this exact number. And I will explain that later. So below is the funk ready, where we would like to start our timer simply by typing timer.start and timer is the reference to our timer on the left, which is a timer node. And this timer node on every single second will fire our function on timer timeout, which is here because we've connected them. And you can do that simply by clicking here on the timeout. And that will create another function, func on timer timeout. But we don't need that because all of the logic is right here. Let's uncomment. So at first, when this func fires at every second, we would like to add to our total time a one second. Later we've got var m that stands for minutes and var s that stands for seconds. And we would like them both to be displayed on the screen in the label node. So to get the minutes, we simply divide our total time in seconds by 60 and that will return the minutes. The seconds part is a bit more complicated because it will need to be limited up to the 60. So the total time in seconds minus m times 60. And all that is left to do is to connect our label node. And you can simply copy this part. To better show you how it works, I've got this print total time seconds. So when we run the project, we see that every single second the number counts up. And with this number, the label that text is changed to match the time that we've provided it with in our GD script. And whenever the seconds part of the time gets close to 60, and when it finally reaches it, it gets changed to zero and the minutes part gets increased. And there's a bit more tricky part to it, because I've called it minutes and seconds. But for my game, I would like to present it to the player as it were hours and minutes. So the minutes in my code would be presented as hours and the seconds in my code would be presented as minutes for the player. And if that's so, I would like to create a clock reset at zero o'clock. So let's uncomment this if statement. So when the total time seconds reaches 1440 and then the number is changed to zero to start count up again. Okay, and above I've prepared the cheat sheet for you just to make it easy to understand for everyone. So in my game 9 p.m. stands for 1260 seconds and every next hour is 60 seconds added to it. And that gives us the midnight at 1440 seconds. So 1 a.m. is 60 seconds, 2 a.m. is 120 seconds, and so on. And remember that as a game devs, we can change almost anything. And in my case, if I would like to make the count up even faster, I can simply go to my timer node, inspector, and make a smaller wait time, 0.05. And that should make our count up very fast. So let's see. Let's save the changes and run the project. As you can see, the timer goes really, really fast. And at the midnight, it resets to zero. And the cycle will simply continue forever. And if that's too fast for you, you can change it to two seconds. And that will make our clock very slow.
Yeah, and that's it. I hope I could help you with this quick tutorial and make your game better. If you've enjoyed it, then subscribe or leave a like for more future content, because my channel is full of Godot tutorials. So if you're interested in Godot like I am, then check out my other Godot tutorials. Thank you for your time, have a good day and bye for now.